Some pens are bigger than others, and that is why today we'll be doing a fountain pen shootout. And today we'll be comparing two pens that in some way are pretty much the same and in other ways are different. And I'm talking about the Twisby Diamond 540 and the Twisby Mini, aka the Twisby Mini. Um, these two pens have some features in common. As you can see, the, the barrels are, are very much alike. And some things are different, mainly the size. These come in a bunch of finishes. Uh, I took the classic here and I had the a classic transparent uh, demonstrator on the 540. I have separate reviews of these pens on my channel, so if you want more in-depth views, check those out. Um, and if you don't, then then don't check them out. Um, so today I'll just I'll just talk through both pens very quickly, then I'll show you how to take them apart, and I'll do a writing sample. Okay, 540, nice pen. My first pen show, someone gave this to me, not this one, but gave his 540 to me and said, try this out. I did. I was sold straight away. I think it's a lovely pen. Great features. It looks cool. Very clear plastic. It's beautiful. You hold it. Decent size. You can post it if you want to, but then it gets a little cumbersome. Uh, it, the cap doesn't post very deeply, you see. It's a piston filler. Uh, because it's a demonstrator, you can actually see that thing moving in there. It's it's very cool. I, I love it. Holds a ton of ink. I mean, this is a very large reservoir. Um, I think that is great. Um, and that's pretty much all there's to it. This is a, a fairly large pen. Um, what have I got that's normal? Oh, here. You, you, you may know this. This is one of those noodles, piston-filled pens. So as you can see, the 540 is not exactly small, both in diameter as in length. Okay, the Twisby Diamond, uh, sorry, not the Twisby Diamond, the, the Twisby Mini uh, is a little narrower in diameter, but I think it's only like a millimeter of a difference. It's it's not as big as I thought it was at first. When I, when I actually put them together, uh, I thought I saw the difference wasn't that large. I'll show you that later with, with the other camera. It's a little bit more high res. Um, clearly, it's smaller. I would not find this extremely comfortable to use for a long time unposted. Fortunately, this one has threads on the back of the barrel, allowing you to, to uh, post the, the cap very securely. So you can do that. Um, I've got, uh, let me see, uh, well, again, this is, of course, a piston filler. Uh, the useful thing about the threads is that you cannot, when you unscrew them, you are not moving the blind cap. So that's good. Um, because actually I shouldn't say blind cap but piston turning knob with the 540 that's entirely possible you see this so I am I'm just twisting the cap now which is posted and I'm, I would be squeezing out ink if there would be a lot of ink in there so with with, with the the mini that is not the case because the threads are beyond the, the blind cap which is great I say it again I mean the twist the piston turning knob sorry uh, so that's that's interesting um, they now come with Yowo nibs, which apparently are wetter than the Bok nibs I got. I have Bok nibs on both. Um, at least I think this is a Bok nib. Uh, I'm sure that this is a Bok nib. Um, so they're a little dry, but you can you can work on that yourself. Especially this one, because I think the 540 wasn't dry at all. Um, that's pretty much all there's to it. So, I mean, there's, there's clearly there's a size difference. There's no size difference in the nib, at least not on, on my pens. Um, Piston fillers, a lot of ink. Clearly, the, the Mini's ink capacity is a little smaller than that of the uh, the 540, just because it has a somewhat shorter barrel. But in all, this one holds quite a lot of ink, too. Um, I think the two of them are great pens. I like using them both a lot. And that's what I can tell you. So, I think I should now show you how to take them apart. Then I'll do a writing sample. And you can decide for yourself which of these you need, because they're both clearly they're, they're for different purposes. One is small, one is bigger. Um, you have to figure that out for yourself. So that's what we'll do next. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, so here we go. Twisby Diamond 540, my first Twisby ever. And the Twisby Mini. I want you to, to see the size difference. Um, the Mini is a little bit narrower, has a somewhat smaller diameter in the barrel than the 540, but it's not extremely pronounced. I hope the video sort of picks that up. 
Uh, I think it's really like one millimeter difference or something. So it's 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 quite small. When it comes to nibbage, um, I think the two have roughly comparable nibs. Uh, I I uh, I'm not sure about. Th yeah, I I think these wasn't this one a Bok nib too? I don't have the Yowo nibs uh, yet. Um, so for me it's it's Bok only, which is actually not bad because that means I can compare the two quite directly because I have a strong feeling these are pretty much identical nibs. There may be a little bit of a difference in the... Well, as to size, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. In any case, please bear in mind that this one was stubbed by Dan, danzaman.com. Uh, so it's it's not a regular broad, but both are broad nibs in principle. Okay, traditionally I show you how to take apart a pen in a shootout. Uh, for the Twisby you can take everything apart, both Twisbys by the way. What you need is a Twisby wrench, you get that with the pen, this is a fantastic service, I absolutely love that. And the cap I think you can take apart if you want to. Um, I'm not you know, I, I don't think there was a screw in there, but I, I, I think you can pull out the inner cap, you can remove the clip. Personally, I don't generally take caps apart unless I really have to because ink got stuck there or something. So, um, I'm not going to show you how to do that, we'll just discuss the pen here. First of all, you can unscrew the section. I always like to put my thumb in there, you can see that that's the, the, uh, the, 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 the nib collar. I always like to put my thumb in there and then just push, and as you can see, the nib collar with the nib and feet just comes out. Please bear in mind that all of this is plastic, and it will crack. So if you put stress on this, it will crack. It is not bulletproof plastic. The nib and feet can be pulled out if it's necessary, you want to clean them very well, or maybe make them a little wetter or something. Be aware of the little o-ring right there, you don't want to lose that. Um, because then you may push this in too far, and who knows, you may crack something. Did I mention that plastic sometimes cracks? <clears throat> Here we have the piston, uh, well, the barrel and the, the piston housing unit, etc. What you do is you unscrew this bit, so make sure the piston is in the downright position. This doesn't rotate any further. You take the, um, the wrench, you put it in there, and you unscrew it. Now I always tend to go to the left because in, Euro in Europe that's what you do when you unscrew something but with this pen I think you actually have to turn it to the right to unscrew stuff but okay we can manage that. Um, you get a little bottle of, of liquid silicon grease with your pen uh, you can put some on there um, you can take out the piston maybe put some grease there if you want that to lubricate that part, put some uh, uh, silicon grease on the seal. You can take off the blind cap, you can take out the piston guiding rod, and this is the piston housing unit, and that's pretty much all there's to it. Now I once had a whole theory on how to put this back in place so that you can actually twist the piston back as completely as possible, as far as it goes. Uh, something like that. Sorry, I have to fiddle around a bit. That is in another shootout video with the Twisby I did. Uh, this for me would be close enough right now. I don't want to fiddle with that any longer. So I put it back together, take the barrel, you can clean that out. It, it's closed off at this end, not completely, but it's a sort of a, uh, a dam thing in there. N not a dam thing, I mean a, a, a dam like thing you know, with a little hole in there. So you cannot put a, um, for example, a Q-tip in there only from the back. There we go. Uh, so now I am going to the left, I think, yes. Very IKEA-ish, all of this. There we go. I'll take the nib and feed. Put them back together. They have a sort of, there's a, a small slot in the feed. The nib sort of slides into, so you know when it's aligned well. There was a little hole, I'm not sure how you can see that. See that? A little hole down the bottom of the nib collar. That's what the bottom of the feed, the channel goes into. Try to align that well. There you go. Make sure it's pushing all the way to the back. Put it in here. There are little notches 
on the nib collar, make sure they align with the little notches on the section. Otherwise it may crack because plastic can in fact crack. Running gag! Here we go, put that back in there. Done! Mini! Uh, I guess pretty much all pens have the same function. Some have different filling systems, but they all have a nib and feed and all that stuff. Uh, some are just bigger than others. Uh, and this is well, pretty much, you know, I, I won't say pretty much the same pen, but in principle it has a lot of components in common with its, its larger brother. Uh, you have a the, the section which you can unscrew carefully, you don't crack anything. Um, now we have the, the nib collar again. Again, you can push it out with your thumb. I prefer that to just, you know, pulling away at the nib and feed. You, you never want to, to bend anything. Um, yes, okay, so there's... I'm, I'm not sure whether I can show you that. Um, there seems to be a notch right there. And there's one there, and there's, so there's four of them, I think. And there are also notches inside the section. Now, my camera is not going to pick that up, I'm afraid. Um, but believe me, they're there. So when you put that back in, make sure you align. You see, it, it that slides in. And if they're not aligned, it just won't go in there. So don't push it, just rotate it a bit. Bang, there you go, it slides in. Okay. I haven't taken this one apart that many times yet. In fact, this is my second time, so... Um, I have to figure out some stuff myself too, forgive me. Nib and feed, they come out, they're in this collar quite tightly, so I would say only take them out if you've used a terrible ink and want to clean this extremely well. Maybe work on the nib, make it a little wetter or something, do stuff with that. Uh, otherwise I would say leave it in, because it's, it's plastic and that can crack. Um, here we have the barrel, the piston, piston housing unit, the blind cap, and the Twisby wrench. Comes out, you see it's a very similar construction to the 540, I would say. We have a blind cap, we have the whole piston that just comes out, we have the blind cap, we have the uh, piston rod guiding unit and the whole piston unit. Um, Again, I'll have to fool around a bit with this. I notice that sometimes it's a little difficult for the blind cap to go back on there again. It doesn't really seem to want to go back on there. Just be gentle and, and keep screwing. And you see it sort of... Yeah, I don't know. It clicks through and, and you're done. Um, I want to take that a little further because... If it's not aligned completely properly, the, the blind cap will be loose. It will... It will uh, twist around a bit in the barrel. So I want to make sure that I've got this aligned well. This seems to be the case now. Um, I put this back in. I take the Twisby wrench. Uh, this time I go to the left, right? Yeah. To the left, right? Right. Left. No. Right or left? What's right? No, there we go. Whoop. And that's nice and tight. You can see there's... I could probably put the piston back a, a bit further. That means I would have to take it out again and, and adjust the way I've, I've screwed it back in place. For me, this is okay for now. Um, I'm just doing a shootout after all. I'm just f fiddling around a bit. Okay, here we go again. You get a sort of slot for the nib. You see that it sort of slides in place. Um, there's a bottom to this thing again. There's a little notch for the this channel on the on the feed. So that's what I want to get there. And as I said before, this is quite tight. So I really would only take out the nib and feed if it's absolutely necessary. Okay, this clicks in place. This slides in place. And bang! We're done. Time to ink up some pens, do a writing sample side by side. For ink this time we'll be using Lindauer Blau. Start with the Twizbini. There we 
we go. I'm not going to measure in capacity because that would really mean I'd have to make sure I can get that piston back all the way in exactly the same way in both pens so that I can give you an accurate, you know, maximum in capacity. I don't think that's a, a very good idea right now. Uh, that would, would take up a lot of time. Uh, clearly the um, the 540 will hold more ink. I think everyone will agree on that. After all, it's it's you know, just a bigger barrel, right? The, the ink reservoir, quite simply, as you can see, is bigger. I'm not sure how well you can see that because it's all quite dark now, but this is the point where the piston seals end, and as you can see, with the 540, that's just a bigger reservoir. It's that simple. So I can't really measure an incapacity. I'm sure there are people who have done so. Maybe the Goulet's on the website or something. Uh, check it out. Check anything out. I think it's time for a writing sample. Okay, so here we go. Here we have the Twisby Diamond 540. The nib is broad and the ink, I've told you, is Lindauer Blau. Then we have the Twisbini, aka the Mini. Min, mini, mini. Min, menu? Why can't I write this? Mini. There we go. This is a broad stub by Dan. Stub. Uh, and again, the ink is the same as this one, of course. Bit of writing. As you can see, this nib has a nice amount of line variation. Uh, something the uh, the regular broad does not have because that's a a, a, a round nib. See, that's just no real line variation. It's a rounder nib. What about flexibility? That is, I think, not so bad, especially for a steel nib. And same thing here, although this is exaggerated a bit because of the italic shape of the nib, of course. What about wetness? Always important for me, the wetness of a pen. Very nice. I've, I've always been, been quite impressed with the 540. I, I think, out of all the Twisby pens, this is my favorite. Uh, nib is smooth, nice, wet, pleasant to use. Fairly wet. This is not the wettest ink in the world. But... My Twisbini was a little dry when I got it. It's not one of the new Joe nibs, as I said, it's a Bok nib. Um, these are a bit drier, but that's not a problem. I worked on it, and as you can see, I wouldn't call that dry now. I just opened up the, the nib tines just a little bit, and you see that the difference is quite dramatic. Okay, well, I guess that kind of settles it, because, you know, the, the, the feed will keep up with fast writing, I can promise you that. So here you have it. The Twisby Brothers. Twisby. Etc. Um, two lovely pens. Which one is better? Well, clearly, if you want portability or a small pen, this is it. The, the, the Mini is great for that. Uh, if you want more of a full size pen with a lot of ink, because this thing has a, a large ink capacity, you may want the 540. Uh, and, and that's really all I can say. I mean, they're, they're different pens. It's like asking, do you want a Beetle or do you want a Mercedes? Um, clearly, these are by the same brand, but they're just you know made for different purposes, I would say. I love them both, um, and for different reasons. I hope I've I've given them an unbiased um, 
view here and, and that you, uh, you you now have a bit of an idea of, of what to expect from each pen. And that's all there's to it. So you've got to make this decision for yourself. I hope this was useful and uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.